to give me a minute because I'm figuring things out here. Got a new setup. And I don't even know if I'm live. So just bear with me and we'll get started in a minute if I am even live here. Seems I'm live. All right. Thank you. How is the audio? I'm going to I'm going to rely on you guys because um there's not much much else I can do. So if if uh there's some audio is not high enough, I can turn it up, but I'm going to get started in just a second here. Audio's good. Great. And video's okay. I'm going to run through, um, well, it's, it's great that, um, you guys were able to join me. I just want to get started and then whoever joins late is joining late. Um, I've got a couple of different scenes set up really quick just so I can fl flash through them as I'm drawing. Um, you can see here the landscape that I'm going to be great. The landscape that I'm going to be using is this image, um, to draw from. Let me go through the tools I'm going to be using. Um, for this tutorial and that way if you want to gather some of the same tools I know some of you probably are going to watch this and try it out later some might try to draw along with me I know this light here that's right above my head is kind of annoying but it's kind of necessary for the um, you know the, sh the straight down shot to have good lighting on the image so just kind of ignore it for now so what I'm going to be drawing with today is let me just move this stuff out of the way great Go straight to this one, straight to this one. So I'm going to be drawing with some Uniball pens, which are great. These are great um, black pens that if you put some water on them right away, they'll bleed nicely, but they'll also, if you let them dry, you can use watercolor on top of these and they won't bleed. So it's a matter of whether you want to let them dry or not, what, how, how much they'll bleed through. So they're great pens. Um, if I use like a, if I want to use a big black area, I use um, like a brush and some of this Dr. Phil Martin's black ink. This stuff is the blackest ink out there. You know how sometimes you get a nice deep black on an ink and then when it dries, it kind of fades a bit. This stuff is, is the blackest I've found. So I recommend that stuff. I don't get money for recommending them. I just happen to like them. Uh, I'm going to use these Koi watercolors, which every time I open them, they fall apart, but... I, I like these things. They're pretty good. I'm just going to put them back real quick. So watercolor set I'll be using a little bit of um, just a jar of water with some a few different random brushes that I'm going to be using that are kind of neat. And then I have this mix of different uh, charcoals and uh, pastels and crayons that I like to use in my mixed media work. So all stuff that is... Um, you know, when you're doing mixed media, you can really work with anything you want. So I'm going to be using pen and ink and watercolor mainly. That'll be the, the base for this. But if you'd rather use pencil and color pencil, you can. You can use these same ideas uh, that way. I just realized I moved that microphone and it probably made a really awful noise. I'm sorry if it did. Um, I do have colored pencils also. So let me go back to the other um, screen real quick. Okay. So I am going to show you a landscape tutorial based on a photograph. Um, generally, it's, if you can, it's great to get outside and take, you know, you know, you can take like a little travel watercolor and a travel brush and, you know, you, the brushes that you fill with water and a pen and you can take a little pad and go sit outside and draw a landscape in plain air. That's great. Um, however, we're going to be, because we're, I'm doing a tutorial and we have to be inside. I'm going to be using a photograph. One benefit to using a photograph, well, there's more than one benefit. I'll tell you some of the benefits, okay? In my opinion, one of the main ones is when you're looking at a landscape, when you're looking out and you see a cityscape or whatever you're doing, 
it's in three dimensions, right? There's things that are further in the distance, there are things that are close. And so you've got to try to take this depth, this three-dimensional depth, and you've got to squish it into a two-dimensional piece of paper. And so you have to do that math, I guess you could say, in your mind. Whereas if you're working from a photograph, like this photograph here, right? There's things that are farther away in this photograph and things that are close, but it's already been squished into two dimensions for you. And another thing that's nice about uh, working with a photograph, and so if you're, if you're not someone who's done a lot of landscapes, I'd say start with photographs and then work your, get good at those and then try to go out into the real world and draw real landscapes from, you know, live. But another thing that's great about a photograph is the photographer has already framed a nice image for you. When you're looking out, you're sitting on a, you know, on a corner in a city and you're looking out, you're not going to draw everything you see. It, you know, you have to figure out, okay, I want to draw this section. And sometimes if you're new to art, it's hard to figure out what's it, you know, how do I frame a good image that's, you know, compositionally interesting. Whereas a photographer has already done that when you work from a photograph. Um, obviously, if you're making art and you're trying to sell it, you got to be careful when you're working from photographs because a photographer holds copyright. Um, and if you make it too close to the photograph, then you, you might have issues. I try to work really loose and um, the details, I don't add all the details in. Sometimes I add details that aren't even there that I just kind of make up. And so, you know, my image versus the photograph is going to be far enough apart where I probably won't have any issues. Um, so let's get started. Let's just get started. But I don't know. Um, I don't want to waste too much of your time. I'm going to do you guys think that this view is better or you can kind of see, I'm going to be like looking down or would you rather just see this? I think this is probably better where you can just kind of see the image and the, so you can see the, what I'm drawing and you can see the image I'm working from. I am going to, I don't know if you can see it if I move it closer, but you there, you can see some light lines and what I've done, I have, let me put this back the right way. I've taken a pencil and very, very lightly, I've looked at the photograph and kind of made some shapes of what I see. And so I've done this first and I recommend starting like this. Um, take, you can even trace it if you'd like. If you wanna take your photograph, print it out, and then just trace the shapes. Don't trace any details, but you don't have to. You can just draw from what you see, but just do the, ver the shapes of um, like, you know, where the sky is outlined and then maybe the side of the building and where the steps start, maybe the shape of the whole steps, the shape of this whole building on the left. Um, and what you're doing is you're just setting yourself up so when you start drawing with pen, you can move quickly because you're, you're confident that you're, you're at least within the, sh the shape that you're supposed to be within, if that makes sense. Um, that's the reason I've done it. I don't always work like this, however, it's, it's, I think I did it for this reason. I did it because if you're new to uh, drawing like this and you want to try to draw loosely, it is nice to have some rough shapes there because then you're, you're able to move more confidently because you know, you're kind of at least within the right area and you're, you, you've got it mapped out enough that you know, it's going to be proportionate. So I'm going to continue, um, moving. I'm going to start. So I can't really see the image. In front of me, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm using my iPad on the side. I've got the same image lined up. And I'm just going to start, and I'll kind of talk through this as I go. And I can see the chat. So if you have any questions as I'm moving, why I'm making a decision, um, my, uh, just let me know. No, I don't monetize my channel. Um, it's I haven't really built it up enough to do that. And I'm just doing this, um, you know, just for some, for some fun. Um, I have an Etsy shops. If you'd rather uh, see what I'd rather have is if people enjoy my art and they wanted to donate, um, then just get, get like a print or something on Etsy because then you're actually going to get more for it, for your money or stickers or something. I don't know. I also have other courses. Um, so maybe eventually if I, if I started to, uh, do YouTube more, I would, I would maybe monetize, but, um, 
Thank you. So what I'm going to do is, because I've already got them lined out, I'm just going to start... Uh, I live in... I just moved, and so my studio is not even really set up. Hold on. I'm moving back. I'm moving back to this camera. My studio is not really set up right now. I'm like using a ladder to hold my thing. But anyway, I moved more into the city. So when you, if you hear like cars go by or buses or we live near a train station. So you may hear things and it's kind of annoying, but there's not much I can do about it. All right, I'm going back to the other view. Great. So I'm, I'm going to move pretty quickly here once I get going. And man, I cannot really see that. I should have set up this up a little bit better. Actually, I am. I'm going to move my keyboard over and I'm going to put my iPad right in front of me just to make it easier for me. This is just, uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to start finally, right? And keep in mind, this is um, just loose. You can always go back and, and rework lines if, if you don't like them. You can even cut pieces of paper from a different piece and put them over mistakes. I mean, there's so many things you can do here that it does not really... The last thing you want to do is be too precious with things, right? So that is what I'm not going to do. I'm just kind of try to draw what I see the best I can, which may be okay, may not be. I'm sorry if the, um, the image quality isn't that good. I, I ordered a new camera and I ordered um, a new arm to hold the camera up and it's supposed to come today. So next video I do, it should be a little bit better. So I do apologize if it's not, the quality isn't maybe as good as it should be. The train just is coming. You can hear the, maybe you can hear the whistle, I don't know. All right, where's my brush? Sometimes as I'm laying the lines down, oops, I might lay a little bit of shadow just while the ink is wet. I'll figure this out later though. It was so quiet here for the whole two hours while I was setting up. And then as soon as I start, the, they start picking up the trash and it's probably a UPS truck outside with my new camera. That's what's making noise. Who knows? That's what I hope it is. So I know this isn't for, um, for everybody, but in, um, in May, I'm going to be going to Morocco as doing an art leading an art retreat and there is some spots open actually if you're if you would if you're interested um, but we'll be doing landscapes there and and we're going to be doing really interesting landscapes in plain air in person and I'll be able to really work with each student um, so that's kind of like a dream trip um, but there is still spots open I'm really looking forward to that's going to be a really cool trip I oftentimes only just work from photographs because, you know, I live in Maine and half the year it's so cold it's, it's hard to go outside and draw. So to be able to be in a warm climate for a week and, and be able to draw outside is going to be nice. I think I put the, uh, the iPad that I'm using to look at this photograph is kind of, oh no, never mind. Great. I thought it was over the chat, but it's not really. So I'm just kind of, I'm glad I, I shaped these things out with a pencil. I don't always do that, but it's, it's kind of working nicely. Man, all right, so 12 o'clock, 12.15 on Friday. This is the time not to do live videos because when the trash is, guys come, I guess, and just sit outside my house apparently. I was hoping to do like a
studio tour, like a video studio tour, but I just don't have it all set up the way I want it yet. I've got some uh, blackout curtains coming so I can control the lighting and some shelves coming and, and things like that. And I just want it all set up nicely before I'd give it a tour of the new studio. But it's much nicer than the old one I was working in, which was just, we lived in a condo and it was just a tiny bedroom that I just turned into my studio. And now I have a lot more room. I've got a garage so I could um, work on larger pieces uh, eventually, which is going to be really nice. Thank you uh, for the support, TV. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, but um, I'm glad that you're enjoying my art books. Thanks, Benjamin. I always worry that the noise is gonna be super annoying. On the positive note, I'm kind of hoping that it is the stuff that I ordered um, being delivered. So this, this paper is off-white and the reason I chose this paper is because um, this has a lot of snow in it and I'm hoping to maybe put some, use some of the white pastels to kind of have some highlights in this drawing. Oh, real quick before I forget and then I'll, I'll stop talking about it, but um, the Morocco trip, if you are interested in that, um, it is all fully refundable if you get COVID or if you can't travel because of COVID reason. I know that's like something that people are obviously concerned with, with the new variant and they're wondering what will happen. And, you know, I wouldn't want to book a trip and then not be able to go and not be able to get my money back. So I get that. Um, but it is, they have a really good policy about that because of the pandemic that's kind of out of our controls. Hopefully the um, new variant, although it spreads quickly, hopefully it's not as deadly as the other ones. So what I'm going to do when I, it's taking me a little bit of time, but what I want to do once I get to a, a good spot, one of the be most beautiful parts about uh, landscapes, when you're looking out at a landscape or when you're in a city, um, I'm gonna switch to the other video of the camera real quick so I can talk to you guys. One of the great, the best parts about a landscape when you're looking at it is all the beautiful textures and colors. And so when I draw a landscape, that's why mixed media works so well is you can use all sorts of different mediums to create these different textures. And that's what I'm gonna try to do to show you what I like to do anyway. So I'll probably, um, you can see the brickwork in the house. I'll probably use a pen to make some lines in there and then maybe do some watercolor over here and pastel for the snow. But um, the point is I'm going to use different mediums to create different textures here, which I think will work nicely. Um, I, I wanted to show you guys the tools I'm using because sometimes I forget to do that and everyone, that's like the first people question people ask is, what tools are you using? Just kind of. I don't know. These are, are kind of rough. Oh, this one kind of like. Sometimes like I get confused with what I'm looking at. When you're looking at something so complex like a landscape, especially when you're doing it live outside, it can be confusing. And so you think, oh, I got to get every line just right the way it is. But that's just not the case. Like our mind fills in so much detail that you can really like miss tons of detail and have your image still be like really solid. And people, it almost is better to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in some of the brickwork so we get some textures in here. And then we'll go in with some watercolor afterwards and some ink. So I'm just kind of going here and then maybe do some um, 
horizontal vertical lines just to kind of mimic the brickwork. But you can see I'm not taking my time. I'm going pretty quick. Um, so normally what I would do is as I'm drawing, I'll turn the paper a lot so that I can make the lines at an easier angle. But I'm trying not to do that because I want to keep it like that so it's easy for you guys to see. So the lines are kind of harder to do from this angle. Here we go. Good enough. I'm going to do some more of these little vertical lines to kind of, or vertical dashes to just mimic the, or the bricks. As you can see, it's not delicate. It doesn't really matter. And then it starts to become, I'll show you in a second which is something that you can easily fix. Because right now I've only used this one pen. And so what happens is all of the line weight is at, is kind of the same and so the image isn't that interesting um, and it kind of becomes a little bit confusing and so what I like to do is kind of go in and, and thicken up some of the lines here so that you can make it um, you know you can see where the window outlines are and this is under the windows there might be a little bit of maybe not in this image but a lot of times there's some shading under the sill so maybe use a little bit of the water to kind of make the ink bleed get a little bit of that under this one we'll get it i hope that the camera is not bouncing too much so we get a little bit of texture um let's see there's brickwork around here too but there it's different brickwork but it doesn't really matter there's kind of like an archway and then the bricks up here are the same. So I'm just going quick. So I can't wait to set up my new camera and stuff because what I plan on doing is just setting it up and leaving it that way. It'll be really easy for me to do these type of videos moving forward um, and time lapses and whatnot. So great. Let's get some color going. Do that real quick. We just finished um, that show Parks and Rec, and it, it was pretty good, but we're looking for another show because I feel like there's never anything good to watch. So, does anyone have any suggestions? If you do, put them in the chat. I've obviously seen The Office, so I know that's a good show. Um, so I'm just kind of going to make, make the pipe um, a little bit darker. Nothing's too precious, so you just don't, you know, if you mess up, don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to do, what kind of colors do I want to do? I'm going to put the white, so the white snow I'm going to kind of save till the end, because once you put that pastel stuff kind of down, it's, 
you can't really do much painting over it. So it, once you do enough um, mixed media stuff, you get you start to get like a pretty good feel for which mediums you need to go do first and which ones you, you need to wait on. Just kind of right. This is all dark. I'm not going to do the whole thing dark. Um, I don't think, but I'm just kind of getting some interesting textures with the brush um, in some certain spots and um, probably down here a little bit. I'm going to also fill this in more. All right, I'm using some colors now. I I wish I had backed out a bit more so you could kind of see the palette that I'm using. Will this work? Let me see. Well, this might work if I put that kind of there. A lot of times I'll mix the colors, so I kind of like this brown. And what I'll do is I'll, you can't see it because it's off to the side, but I'm just putting some on a piece of paper and with a little bit of the green and I'll kind of mix them together until I get a, a color that I like. And don't worry too much about the colors that they have to be exactly what you're seeing. Um, that's not the case. You can, you can do whatever you want, really. You definitely don't have to be exact. So this down here is pretty dark. I think I'm going to probably use some of this black ink down here to open it up. get another brush so I can I always feel like I have to work really quick in these tutorials because I don't want it to be like a long boring video <laughs> see when it's wet like that when you put this ink down it does that it's like I don't know if you can see it good because of the uh, video quality, but when you put it down, it just starts spreading and it makes some really cool marks. Put that to the side for now. I think I do want to color this big chunk in with that nice, um, maybe like a yellowy brown. This brush that I'm using isn't that big, so I'm just gonna, I probably should have got a bigger one. I'm gonna have to just kind of do my best here. But if I if I had a bigger brush it would be better because I could get this whole thing colored really quick and then while it's wet. So don't do what I'm doing here. If you have a nice big brush, use that. But then you get a nice some darker areas over here. And it's like a bright kind of yellow down here. Then it mixes. See, this is why you want the tools for the job. If I had my nice big brush, this would be going a lot smoother. Let's see, where's the other one? There we go, it's kind of interesting. Got the brush with the black out. I'm going to just kind of put in a couple of spots. This is a little bit darker too. Get that door, which has got a nice green to it. Oops. 
It's also nice to have, um, two, if you can, to have two waters, one with one that's more clean and then one that's it can be a little dirty that you can use for your brush that you're using with black ink because once you get the water too dark, it's hard to do uh, lighter colors. Next green, and then um, when you're working with watercolor, many of you probably know this because you've worked with it en enough, but um, it always dries like a lot lighter than it's, it looks like it's gonna dry. So that's something to keep in mind. If something looks too dark, um, don't worry too much about it because it'll probably dry like a lot. I don't know what that red mark is on the wall, but it does add a nice little piece of, or a nice little splash of color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start working a little bit with the white. Um, this is a little bit sooner than I normally would, perhaps, but um, for the sake of, of time, I'm going to. So I got a crayon. I also have some other white tools here. I'm just looking what well, might be the best one. I'm running out of the one I really like, which is this teeny little piece of, I don't even know what it was, but man, it makes a really nice, so I might put some of this white up here. Let's see. The whole sky is, is very, very bright in this image. I'm probably not going to do the whole sky. I'm probably just going to do some highlights, which is um, the cool thing about drawing. You take your own liberties. You don't have to make it look exactly like it looks. So I'm going to remember this is, you know what I wanted to do? I forgot. I should probably do it. Should I do it now or wait? No, I'm going to wait. So this pile of snow over here, and it kind of comes up. You can kind of do a bit and then step back and take a look um, before you take add too much more. What I'm going to do is add some more texture in here real quick. can't really see the bottom of the image because of the way my screen is set up, but I know there's snow here. Oops, sorry about that. And then once, if you get like, I know I'm, I'm acting like you guys are all going to do this this landscape when obviously you're going to pick your own probably to do. Although you can use this image if you'd like to try. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, probably come in with some type of a darker tool. Maybe like um, not, not pen because that won't work over here. But something to dirty the snow up because the snow is not perfectly clean like that. So I've got a, a nice choice of different tools I can use here. Um, you can do a little off to the side just to see. Whoops. They all have different... Wait, actually, you know what I want to do is I wanted to get a nice dark black. This might be dark enough. To do some contrast between the um, 
the snow and the steps. It's not dark enough. So I'm not even looking at the picture right now. I'm just kind of using um, my my brain of what steps kind of look like. And this is very rough. It doesn't have to look exact. And then probably go in better with the uh, this white. Get some more snow on these steps. Anyway, you can kind of see what's going on. It's a bit bit of a mess, but in a nice way. <laughs> what else could this image use? I think I think that the um, I'm to the point now where I might start messing around a bit with um, with things that aren't even in the image. So that's what I'll do. If if you're here, you probably know my work, so you know that I like to use like uh, photographs and things like that. I don't know that I'll do that in this image. I miss the um, I don't know how I did this, but I somehow miss that little light that's right here, the one that's in the wall. So I'll just kind of put it here. And then, I, you know, you could put some white in there to, to do the bulb if you wanted. And then this this nice piece, you gotta, I gotta get like a brown pencil. Mm, I bet I could have a better brown than that. Hold on. This one. Kind of get this pipe here. And then I'll do some gray. I have, um, let's see. Well, I could just use uh, black watercolor and use that for the gray. Just to kind of put it in these windows. You can, I don't know if you can even see that. This house has, um, I get it's kind of a white trim, but it's also kind of like yellowy. I think it's probably more yellow than white. So like I could go in, oops, there was some red on that. Use some yellow for the trim here. This is just some, like a crayon that I've peeled. And then it's kind of some trim here. Nice, so it's kind of coming together. That was like, um, that red really died down. It was really bright and then it just kind of died down. I never know how these things are going to come out when I start, and sometimes they come out better than others, obviously. You see, pen doesn't really write on top of this 
pastel very well. In fact, that stuff, if you try to write over it with your pen, it gets like, it mugs the pen up so it doesn't work. So let's grab a different one for now. So there we go. I think um, so. You see, as you can see, I really try to keep it as as loose as I possibly can, um, and I probably could do a little bit more watercolor on this side and then have this. There's like a nice dark spot up here, or maybe just use some of this stuff. This is just like a little piece. This is um, a big piece of some type of a vine charcoal that I broke up. And then this is just a piece of like styrofoam and or some type of a foam that you can use to kind of smooth it out. But it kind of adds some nice texture. In the building. Um, where's the eraser? Take some of it out. And then this image probably could use some blue or yeah, some type of another color to, to pop off of this yellowy orange. So, you know, you could put some blue in the sky if you wanted on an image like this. Once you, you know, obviously in the photograph, there is no blue. But it doesn't mean that you you can't add some type of a blue somewhere. I don't know exactly where I want to put it. And if I were to um, if I were really wanted to finish this piece, I might even step back for a second and think about it before I just put put it down because you could end up putting it down and hating it. Um, I might even take a photograph of it and then on my iPad, add a little blue and see if it works, but I'm not doing that. As you can see, I'm just putting it in and you know, I might regret it right away. I definitely don't like that. All right, you know what? See, I should I should have listened to myself and I should have stepped back from this piece because I'm not crazy about it. But you know what? It's fine. So this is my landscape and you can see it's kind of a mess. There's all sorts of different mediums going on, but I had a ton of fun. Um, it's visually interesting. I don't know if it's visually great, but it's definitely interesting. Um, the main thing, oh, I'm gonna move back, hold on. Turn this off. So the main th thing about drawing, when you draw anything really, but landscapes especially, is just to remember like, nobody is going to be comparing your drawing to the actual landscape because they don't see that, you know, so they don't see the landscape. So you can leave things out you can add things, you can change the color of things, unless you're doing like a really famous landscape like the um, Eiffel Tower or something that people know really well. But even then, take liberties, you know, it, that's the beauty of art. Um, make a mess. This is, this is how it ended up turning out. I don't know if the other camera was that good, um, but not too bad. It's not terrible. It's not the worst thing I've ever made. Um, trying to think. You know what? I made a post about that I was going to do this on Instagram. This morning I made a post 
saying I'll be doing a, a YouTube live landscape and I have if you guys are still watching this if you go comment on that that um, post one of the people that comment on that post I'll choose to send this this to so if you want a chance to win this drawing maybe it's worth it to you go comment on that and sometime tomorrow or the next day I'll choose a, a winner and I'll message you and I'll announce it in my Instagram stories and I'll send this to you so I don't know I just decided to do that last minute um, anyway I have other art lessons available that are you know for more professionally shot um, on Carla Sondheim's website there's a portrait one and there's um, also a sketchbook one and in January I'm filming a procreate one that's all um, how to use procreate and how I use it personally um, and so that'll be have some fun projects in it and of course I'm doing the art retreat in Morocco so hopefully some of you guys can make it there's still like a couple of extra spots open um, anyway I hope to see you guys soon up on my YouTube channel have a great day